the shed. Pretty much done, but a bit of internal furnishing still to do. And here in the corner, I'm going to build a workbench. Now, please do not think you're going to get an instructional video or see great example of brilliant woodmanship or carpentry. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. My plan comes more or less exactly from an Australian DIY channel called DIY for Knuckleheads. And that just about sums me up. The guy who presents that calls himself Uncle Knackers, which I think is just hilarious. So he's a good guy. And yes, you can go on YouTube and you can look at all kinds of instructional videos about how to do fantastic carpentry joints. But as one guy said, when you're building a workbench, your skills are probably not up to the standard of doing a fancy proper carpentry joined workbench because you're kind of just starting. So the first cut, <clears throat> I have measured the length that I want from the other end up to here. The other end in that direction is a machined cut from the factory. The other end in this direction was cut off in the shop when this thing was cut to length, it was done by hand saw. I'm not doubting any carpenter's skills as a nice straight cut when using a handsaw. However, might be a little bit rough. So, from a nice flat end, because quite frankly, with my carpentry skills, I need as much help as I can get in getting nice, flat, neat joints. Right, I have my two long sections, and over here, I have four width sections, that's the right word, and then screw them together. This is where a nice flat firm floor helps. Now, new box of screws from Screw Fix. Always get your screws from Screw Fix, the clue is in the title. That's not a plug, they pay me nothing. In the kitchen, you open things with a nice pair of scissors. In the workshop, you use a Stanley knife. And hopefully, you've still got your fingers at the end of it. So, with my Carpenter square, although it's a triangle, making sure the internal angle is 90 degrees. To repeat on all four corners. So we have the top frame. And into that, we'll sit the legs. However, to make it strong, I'm going to do that. And that is so that this bit here gets screwed into that. And remember, this is all upside down. The weight of the bench is also supported on this one. This one I'm waggling. And those screw together will form a nice support. Obviously, I've got to cut them precisely so they have a joint at the top. Well, not a joint that's going to look like that. Now I'll measure that up by doing that kind of thing. So this is what I mean. Two four twos, screw together, different lengths, slot in nicely here. Remember this is. Uh, Remember, this is upside down. Just about right, I hope. Now, the important thing, of course, is to get this spot on on all four legs. Because it's okay to get one leg spot on. But you've got to get them all level. And then what we're going to be doing on the top of this, and I've incorporated this into the height measurement, is putting caster wheel. Now this is what I mean by sometimes when you get them back from the shop, the ends aren't quite level, it's a bit hard to see like this, but if I use my carpenter square, and I'm just butting that up nicely, bring that to the end, on this side, you see it is, it's hard to see, but it is slightly proud, about a millimetre, millimetre and a half maybe, if my eyesight is that good, uh, at the other end. So that can throw you off. 
depending on what you're building, depends what quality you want. So it's sometimes just good to trim that up on your drop saw with a nice flat edge, nice flat edge here on the guide, and then the blade will cut straight, should do if it's set up properly. Then you've got a nice, perfect end. Well, it's a few minutes later, and I have cut all the legs, joined them together. So I have put the screws, oops, on the inside so they don't show on the outside, just a little bit neater. And you see what I've, I'm doing here, hopefully I've effectively got a thing with your joint, whatever the name of that is, and that slots into there like that. Now, if you watch that channel video that I told you about, DIY for knuckleheads, how to make a sturdy workbench, he has a system where this is right the way flush to here. And so he does that by cutting out, you know, let me guess, just not fall over, cutting out a corner here. In line, oops, dear me, in line with that. So there's just like, see what I mean? So that bit here sits right over here, but, but flush. Um, that would require some cutting and chiseling. My chiseling skills are not brilliant and I would be in one of those situations where you shave it down it's not flat you shave a bit more and you've taken more than you need and then the joint is even more rubbish than this would be. Uh, Uncle Knackers of DIY knuck for Knuckleheads says this joint is perfectly acceptable he's just being you know doing it better because he is a better workman than I am have more practice maybe he's got more skill so what we're gonna do now is to put some screws to fasten this and some bolts as well one bolt in each corner um, two screws on each leg so there's the bare bones of an upside down worktop legs are in and it feels pretty sturdy already I do that one as well just to check yes there we go lovely and we're going to put a coach bolt through there just to secure that screws are great but for really holding timber where it's just butted together like this and screwed in place uh, you need a coach bolt unless you are going to be using something like a tenon and thingy joint mortise and tenon joint that's the one must be getting near lunchtime the brains are going so what we're now going to do we I keep saying we I am going to do this you're just sitting there watching I'm going to put two short ones there and some long ones along here remember it's upside down so plywood up on that so there's a shelf underneath the worktop surface now I've made this to a certain height when you're working on a workbench, you don't want to do your back in, and you want to use, if you're using hand tools, the handles are designed at certain angles so that the force goes through the tool in the most efficient way. It's most often seen in older tools. Proper tools. So when you're holding it like that, you see my arm is at an angle, even though this, the plane, is flat. But to be used efficiently, this needs to be at the right height and everybody is at different height. Well, there will be some people who are exactly the same height as you. The way to measure this up is that when you're stood upright, the top of the workbench wants to be about your cuff line. Higher if you're more using uh, power tools on a bench, maybe a little bit lower down to about there or here if you're mainly using hand tools. This is a general bench for me, and of course, if it's too high, you can always cut it lower. It's a bit more awkward to add height. Well, you may think, Mr. Dad Tube, that's not quite the height you said. That's better. So, because the height may be adjusted, I'm not going to measure the height of the shelf from the floor, remember it's upside down, not measure floor because this might not quite be level. I'm going to measure the the height downwards from the top to where I want it. 
So all I've done here is to do some toenail joints. This is butted straight up into here and I've drilled down, angled it, put in a bit of a split there I'm not very happy about. But it's lunchtime. Right, hello again. Lunch was nice. Uh, beans on toast. Sainsbury's baked beans I find uh, better than even some branded ones. Uh, they're really good and little special farmhouse malt loaf thing. Fairly cheap bread, absolutely delicious. I think I overdid the toast a little bit, but not too much. Anyway, sorry, you're not here to hear about my beans on toast extravaganza, plus an apple, plus three cups of tea. How's the bench going? Well, I've just popped back from lunch and I have put in that back bracket thing, whatever you call it. I wouldn't look at the joints down on this level too closely. Now, I'm going to, once this is finished, I'm going to get plywood across here. Yes, solid wood is better. You can smooth it down, blah, 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 blah. blah. Money, dear boy, money. And if I buy a four by eight sheet or even an eight by four sheet, I can get it cut down at certain DIY emporiums uh, or emporia and so that once I know what the measurements are which I could do now but now they are shut because it's Saturday afternoon I want a four centimeter overlap each side I can measure that distance there and I know the rest of the width I've got to play with so they'll cut it nice and neat for me and that width is going to go from here oh dear. <clears throat> from here to however much it is along here. So I need to measure this distance across very carefully, measure twice or three times, take it away from eight, uh, four foot width and see at what point we put the other big long bit of wood. So from a safe distance from behind the camera lens, that looks a really nice neat job. I know there are imperfect, uh, imperfections, so you can't even say imperfections without imperfecticating it. And yes, I know that was the wrong way of saying it, that's the whole point. And yes, there we are. So I'm pretty pleased with that. What I am going to do is now put the coach bolts through here. And that's a DeWalt drill with a DeWalt bit. Easy. So, this goes in. Washer nut, nut washer. On the back. So, nice finish on the outside. Massive great big bolt on the inside. I could have done with the getting shorter ones, but there wasn't a great selection. Um, anyway, doesn't matter, that's going to be hidden, and it's going to be a secret thing to hang things on, should I ever need hanging things in a secret place near a workbench. Who knows? I got these bolts from Wix. I know what I said about screw fix, often the most cost effective place to get any kind of thing, really. Uh, but yes, they do do bolts for a reasonable price in packs of 100. Now, I just shudder to think how many lifetimes of mine will go into a pack of 100 bolts. They will outlive me and my sons and any children they have, I think. So I'm going to put across the top a cross beam in the middle, kind of up there, and then at the quarter stages over here and over here. Obviously, in between not laid on top like that so that'll give it plenty of strength underneath it's just a storage shelf so I'm just gonna put them on thirds so one about here and one about there now I've been a little bit crafty when I was building the shed my dad gave me four lengths of four by twos I had nowhere to store them because I was just taking down my shed and building another one so they got a bit wet 
and I had to sand them down so they are thinner than they would be and they're older wood now they're dry they're fine they're cleaned I have cleaned them up interesting story um, somebody borrowed my little handheld mouse sander not, which doesn't mean it's for sanding mice it means you hold it in the hand and it's like a little mouse like a computer mouse I guess just to make that clear um, I'd left that to somebody else and I needed to clean this up I didn't have that what should I do my neighbor has not only an electric belt sander uh, but an electric plane as well so and again that's a woodwork plane not an aeroplane which is just as well because it would have taken me all month to sand these down with that handheld mouse sander and I did this all by machine and you can see when you get to the end of a piece of wood oh <laughs> so I can saw that off this is so this is secondary quality wood it's fine it will do the job it doesn't quite look the picture some bits are a bit cracked this you can see some little cracks along here these are going to be fine for going in between where they won't be seen and the new wood is outside right so that's the bottom rack carcass in framework done and that box under there is my fishing tackle box which is exactly the right height to put under that frame so that those noggin things so is it just the right height let's plus this it holds them up when you drill in that is ooh, that's beautifully level had to happen at some point so four casters one on each leg it's not rocket science and that is a lovely upside down carcass of a workbench let's flip it up epic i am so happy with that lovely nice and sturdy i have laid on there before i put the caster wheels on and it takes my weight and i am 110 kilograms by the magic of the internet it has only been a few seconds in your time but i have traveled forward two days well that's because i stopped the recording and the, yes well you know so i have been to selco if you're in the uk again not a plug and i've got some sheet plywood um, i went there because sometimes when you go to wix and b and q a they are more expensive and b not always are, is a sheet cutting service available now it's important to get the first screw in right because you're securing that piece of wood exactly where you want it but it's even more important to get the second screw right so i've put that one in and screwed it in place temporarily while i drill the hole for the other one and countersink it and i can come back to that one this one here a little bit later because if you have one screw in the whole thing can swivel around around the axis if you have two it's not going to swivel around so that's on nice and solid just going to give a sand down right time for the big one and just as if by magic there it is it's not fixed on at all now i have measured for four centimeters 40 mils overhang all the way around i want that to be equal so what i'm going to do is with an off cut of wood i'll get a smaller one than this measure four centimeters stick it under there clamp it that's a trick from old uncle knackers of diy for knuckleheads clamp that there and i just you know do that and i know it's solid not solid square whatever in line got to do it more than one place obviously because otherwise it will go skew whiff it's a lovely english word you don't hear that very often these days so um, there are my little chocks the distance from the line here up there is four centimeters i've pushed that very gently because i haven't got i've only got two clamps so one here one there um that can easily be knocked out so very very gently slide that on and that is i just need to adjust that that's almost up to the the support underneath it's far more overhang here 
than it is over the other side. Uh, so let me just slide that along and just make sure everything's square before I put any more screw holes in anything. So a little bit of jiggery pokery. Just take the time, get it right. What I am a little bit anal about, what will annoy me in years to come, is if I put screws along here and they're all over the place. So without being absolute military pinpoint laser precise, what I've done, this big length of pine, that's two and a half inches, that's two and a half inches, clamped it down, and I'm going to just put screws equidistance along here, making sure I'm not screwing into where the screws have gone in that away. Um, and do the same along here, just make sure I get the the noggins. Um, and when other chaps come around and say, oh, what a great workbench, uh, they will secretly look at the screws lined up and think, wow, what a guy. Well, there's something quite meditative and time consuming about lining up all your screw holes and getting them in just so. Uh, but I have done that. The, the little clamps you see there are just marking where the two screws are already in. I haven't countersunk them. They were just holding all this level and straight and square for me while I lined up all the other holes and drilled them. And then I have been around drilling on my markings, oh great, and then <laughs> making some nice countersunk holes. Right, mostly done, apart from tarting it up now. Um, before we get that far, can I just say that it's absolutely fantastic. At six foot three, to stand up, nice and straight, comfortable, and everything is just here. Now, if, if my worktops in the kitchen were like this, chopping, whatever else you do in the kitchen, I forget, um, <laughs> all sorts of things. It'll be so much more comfortable and, and it's, I can just imagine using a saw, a plane, sanding something down or working on things you've got up here that you put on the bench. It's fantastic. Um, so getting things to the right height is very good. The benefit with this is if I find it's a bit too high, I can always take it down a bit. I can't really easily, safely, conveniently build the height up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to sand the edges off, make it a little bit more rounded, and I'm going to put um, a rough sand over the top lightly, and then a fine sand, create loads of dust, and wipe all that off, and think about stain and varnish. Light is uh, dipping now. So we'll end that now. I'm not going to video me sounding because that's really boring. Plus, I'll get sand all on the lens. You do like that, blah, 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 blah. And it'd be a bit pointless. Don't want to get sand on my lens or in my camera. I'm going to put that safe somewhere, get my mask on, get sanding, and you'll see me next time. So this is the end product. I put three coats of varnish on here. One was the old floor varnish that I had for the shed floor and I'd run out by that point. So I got from Tool Station for only eight pounds, dinky little tin, does the job quite nice. This quick dry varnish by Rustins, no product placement. Well, sorry, I had just placed the product. I mean, I'm not sponsored by these people or by Tool Station, but that is what I used. And what I have done here, I have put up some plywood around here. I measured it very carefully so this happens. Oops. Slots in just nicely and unfortunately the lighting here is not brilliant is it? There is no lighting. So there's a slight gap just around the edge. Um, what I did was before I put this up I just got some playing cards because you can really um, yeah, get very fine gradients of height there. I think I used seven cards dotted along just thought about the height I want after I put the varnish on, there is a gap there. I want it to slide under that lip nice and easily, but there'd be hardly any gap. So then with the, with the cards propping that up, just put that on, screwed it into the studs. I put the varnish on the top of that as well. So we now have lovely sturdy worktop, shelf underneath, all on wheels. And when that slots into place, 
shove that in. The caster wheels at the bottom have brakes on. So it's a bit tricky trying to do the far corner. So I'm pointing and I've zoomed in. It's hard to do the caster underneath that wheel. But casters under all the others I can do. And when that is in place, whoops. When that is in place. The bench is like a built-in thing there. Yeah? See, that's not... Well, okay, that one's moving about a bit. But to all intents and purposes, that's not going to move much. And I've got a nice solid worktop, and that's not going to run off. Nothing is. The pencils aren't going to roll under there. I might lose a slip of paper. Um, and it's good because you've got a worktop surround there, if that's what you call it, or a parapet, battlement, what have you. But what I can also do, obviously, take the brakes off. I can move this into the center of the shed. I can work all around it. My son and I are gonna to plan to do, um, get a board for his model railway, so we can work all around that and we can be either side of that. But of course, that means this can come out and I've got storage space in between the studs in here for things, things that I might not use too often that I just tuck away in there, easy to pull it out when I need to get at them. So that is that done. I might just put some blanking boards here, maybe like a pegboard that I could hang certain tools on so that when I step in come here from the garden I can just reach in pick off a trowel, secateurs, what have you things that hang in but I don't really want stuff that's going to be jangling and uh, mucking around there mucking around? they won't muck around but I might well do that to the other end and hang more stuff this side and that's not going to get hit into but there we are experts will come along here and say oh that's, a, yeah, that's not quite straight oh, that's not a brilliant, brilliant join but these are Definitely good enough for what I need, and it's my height. I'm not going to get backache on that. So there we go. Thanks for watching YouTube. This is Dad Tube signing off. Bye.